The Iranians have said, it, it was uh, most clearly said by Ayatollah Khamenei in a sermon back in November, but it has been repeated again and again by all of the relevant body of decision makers, particularly from the Revolutionary Guard, that Iran will meet threat with threat. And I think we're beginning to see some of that in the trends of Iranian foreign policy, first with the reports of an attempt of an assassination attempt against the Saudi ambassador planned last fall that came out, and then more recently with some suggestion that the Iranians have been involved with bombing campaigns against Israeli targets around the world. I think we are returning to a period of the 1990s when Iran, beginning to curtail some of its activities against its uh, Gulf neighbors, began to target Israeli and American operatives abroad in a much more significant and serious way. And that, again, leads to the potential where of, of, a, of a military conflict which does not arise out of a determination by an Israeli leadership to meet a historic threat, but one which arises out of a set of miscalculations and, uh, and aggressive circumstances on the part of Iranian foreign policy. Let me just mention two other factors um, to speak to Ken's uh, question about the broader political dynamics within Iran. And, and one is sanctions. Um, we are in a, a set of circumstances in which Iran is under the most severe sanctions of its 33-year history, a 33-year history in which the country has been persistently the subject of sanctions. We've never seen anything like the sanctions that are in place today in terms of both the international coalition as well as the reach of those sanctions in, in impacting Iran's ability to do business as well as the direct implications for the Iranian population. This is in many ways unprecedented. Iranians resent sanctions. They're aware of them. They recognize the restrictions that they impose. But never before have we seen the direct impact on the pocketbook, the crash of the currency that occurred in the aftermath of the announcement of uh, the, the central bank sanctions in December. And that is clearly influencing, I think, the sense of the regime's ability to manage the situation. To the extent that they see sanctions as a survivable uh, impediment, something that they can withstand as a through evasion, through mitigation, um, and through their, their well-honed networks of, of avoiding the impact of sanctions, then I think it, it contributes to this aggressiveness, to this... It, if we see that sanctions are really beginning to impact the, the domestic stability of the country, um, then I think that you're going to see an Iranian regime which is both more dangerous but also potentially more constrained because they will be more inward focused and more uh, attentive to the, the regime stability concerns. And finally, we have Iranian parliamentary elections coming up on Friday. I would hazard the guess that these will have no direct impact on Iran's nuclear decision making, if only because parliamentary elections, while endlessly fascinating to all of those of us who, who follow Iranian politics closely, uh, have never really had a direct impact on Iran's foreign policy. That does not suggest that they're irrelevant either to this conversation or to Iran's future. This is, of course, the first time that Iranians have gone to the polls for a national election since the 2009 upheaval. That is an important historic moment for Iranians and how they participate, whether or not we see large scale uh, evasion or boycotts of the polls in major cities, I think is going to be a key indicator of what the public sentiment might be. On the other hand, if in fact these elections go relatively successfully, if we see very little pushback from Iranians as they wait in long lines to voice their political opinions for the very first time in public since 2009, then I think we'll see a regime which sees itself that much more solid, that much more capable of asserting itself across the region.